Uh, yeah. Uh, six inch on wheat. Um, no mayo. Uh, hang on. Uh, Dr. Weird? My ass has finally decided to eat my hand! It hungers for more! Uh, yeah, just the one hoagie. This is It Was a Thing on TV. It's a Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the dregs of humanity! Episode 194, Submission 2143. The first appearance of Aqua Teen Hunger Force on Space Ghost Coast to Coast. The episode titled Baffler Meal. Baffler Meal aired on Adult Swim on January 1st, 2003. Well, this is the 20th anniversary of the premiere of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Mike. Yeah, as a full-fledged series, it actually debuted like New Year's Eve of 2000, but it did not become a full series or at least start airing as a full series until September 9th of 2001. Yeah, and you know what, Mike, in the last 20 years, I don't think there's been a series that is warmed our hearts more than aqua teen hunger for us it is such a bizarre but such a funny show also maybe it's just me but i feel really old saying that later on this week is the 20th anniversary of aqua teen hunger forces debut as a series yeah that makes me feel really old yeah because i remember when in 2002 people around the school were telling me about this weird show called Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I'm like, what? There's a show called Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and it's not about aqua or teens or hunger? Or really forces for that matter, yeah. Yeah. It's just a freaking talking pair of fries, a talking meatball, and a talking drinking cup going into wacky adventures in New Jersey. Yeah. And the thing is, even nowadays, my students still maybe not talk about it as much, but they know what it is and they've seen a number of the episodes. So it does have a lasting legacy for better or for worse. And really, I think and it's not just necessarily, let's say, the fault of Aqua Teen Hunger Force or Adult Swim, but really the big thing that Adult Swim did back in that time they got those rerun rights to Family Guy, and it seems once they did that, more eyes came to Adult Swim, and now we know what it is today. So, so maybe in small part, this has brought greater success to uh, Adult Swim in terms of, hey, if we didn't have Aqua Teen Hunger Force and Family Guy reruns, you may not have Rick and Morty. Yeah. You may not have Final Space. You may not have Toonami. Yeah. Aqua Teen Hunger Force walked so Rick and Morty could run. Oh, and by the way, Mike, did you see today on social media, they posted a Rick and Morty live action clip with Christopher Lloyd as Rick? I did not see that. It was oh, all over social media. Well, I have a job. I'm sorry. But you know what? It's amazing considering that Rick Sanchez is basically Doc Brown. I mean, that's genius. Well, it makes sense if you think about it. I mean, even the, the look is sort of there. It sort of looks like Doc Brown. But, but we're not here to talk about Rick and Morty. No, we're not here to talk. And, and really, we're not even here to talk about Aqua Teen Hunger Force. No, we're here to talk about Space Ghost. And, and oh, Space Ghost. That was like the first big show on Adult Swim. Yeah. Well, one and, of the first big... That's the show that made Cartoon Network. So talking about... Space Ghost Coast to Coast, they've had so many great episodes. And one that I remember really well was when Randy Savage voiced a wrestling character on there. Yeah, well, it was supposed to be Space Ghost's grandpa. Who's that little runt over there? Is that Blip? No, Grandpa, that's Zorak. Are you doing, Blip? I need to start you out with some gin -ups. Stay away from me, old fool. Who's that red-headed fellow over there? That's Maltar, my director. Maltar from the ovens of Moltor. 
I met your father once in a steel cage match. I wish you could have seen your old man weeping like a woman after my patented pile driver. Yeah, your dad remembers me. Ooh, yeah! Well, he hooked up on you pretty good in the Texas death match. Because he snuck up behind me with a foreign object. He should have been disqualified! Hey, if the ref didn't see it, it didn't happen. Break it up, you two. It's time for my first guest. Oh, that is hilarious. And I, they did rerun it on uh, Adult Swim sometime in the last like six months or a year. Oh, yeah. And I know it's buried on my DVR. I need to watch that one. Oh, day. it's hilarious. But my favorite, and this is on the list, is the Warren episode of Space Ghost Coast to Coast. So many good episodes. I mean, and the thing is, I didn't get into that show until later in the run. Till probably about 2000, 2001, because our cable service didn't carry Cartoon Network till the late 90s. But gosh, did I get in at the right time? Because they don't really show Space Ghost Coast to Coast all that often. No. And when it does, it's very special. It's, it's very special. And they usually show the best of the best. And among the best of the best, as I mentioned, was the Macho Man Randy Savage episode. But also... The Baffler Meal episode. Yeah. And this is basically the introduction of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force, although it's not the Aqua Teen Hunger Force we know. It, it, it's a pilot, but it's not a pilot. It's a backdoor pilot. I guess you could say they're kind of like variants, like in Loki of um, Meat Wad. Master Shake and Frylock, I guess. You could also possibly consider it like a like a retroactive pilot, maybe. Uh, sort of a flashback type of pilot, you know, to before Aqua Teens were the Aqua Teens. But there's more to this episode than just the Aqua Teens. They had a guest on every episode. And I mean, this is almost appropriate given what... People say about Aqua Teen Hunger Force, oh. how you, you have to be stoned to enjoy it. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, this is the perfect guest for that episode for the Aqua Teen uh, introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, again, being heavily influenced on, on the marriage you want to. The, the guest this episode is Willie Nelson. Oh, Willie Nelson. And we all know what he's best known for. Among other things, yeah. So uh, what happens is just like every episode of Space Ghost, uh, Coast to Coast, it's on the Space Ghost set. And Space Ghost tells Zorak uh, to take off a tribal mask that he's wearing. And Zorak keeps telling Space Ghost no, and Space Ghost starts chasing Zorak. It seems like usual stuff with Zorak. But then a strange uh, set of food uh, characters named the Aqua Teen Hunger Force are on the set. And that's where we meet Meat Wad and Frylock and Master Shake. And they look a little different than what we're used to. And Space Ghost explains that the Aqua Teens are delicious food items from the restaurant Burger Trench. Burger Trench? Uh, that's a, a weird name for uh, a fast food restaurant. But also at the same time, we already have a precedent set by uh, the Adult Swim series C Lab 2021, who uh, in the Tin Fins episode and other episodes talked about a restaurant called Grizzlebees. Grizzle you, you remember the, the maple onion at Grizzlebees? Oh, I do remember the maple one. Hey, I got. <laughs> would you believe I actually have it set up for you, Mike? Are you kidding? No, here we go. Grizzlebees is proud to introduce the Onion Burst, a 96 ounce Vidalia onion deep fried to golden perfection mm. and served with our signature honey maple ranch dipping sauce. Grizzlebees, you'll wish you had less fun. Visit our new airport I 85 location, take the Cypress Hill exit to Corporate Parkway, turn left into the Grizzlebees parking lot, and uh, go inside Grizzlebees. Grizzlebees, you'll wish you had less fun. You'll wish you had less fun. I love it. The Cypress. That, that is great. The Cypress Hill exit. So Moltar and Zolak both think that Burger Trench is disgusting food. Yeah, well, it's fast food, so it's, it's very feasible. Uh, Shake jumps up and down on Space Ghost's desk. Zorak takes away Frylock's amulet. Because remember, Frylock on his back has that jewel, that amulet on his back. That yes. sort of like gives him his powers. Yeah, you see it every now and then. 
And Frylak tries to attack Zorak with a fry sword. Zorak takes away the fry sword and eats it. That's such a Zorak move. Shake seems to have some sort of pushover space ghost who explains to Zorak that they're all on the same team now. Shake quickly reveals that Space Ghost's houseboat is the result of signing a contract with Burger Trends. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and Willie Nelson's probably saying to himself at this point, and I'm the stoned one. Yeah, he, he probably is. Moltar and Zorak get angry with Space Ghost, feeling like they've been sold out. Space Ghost explains that they're still doing the show just with the Aqua Teams. Space Ghost tries to get the guest out, Mr. Uh, Willie Nelson, but Moltar drags Shake away by questioning Meatwad what the Aqua Teens do. After 20 years, I still don't know what the Aqua Teens do. No. Shake notes that Moltar didn't get a limited edition cup with the rest of the Space Ghost gang. Oh, no. no Moltar, we need to get you your limited edition cup. Zorak rips Frylock's left eye out with his teeth. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Ah, and now Willie's oh on the gosh. now Willie's on the set. Yeah, oh, it's, Willie's it's... on the set, and he yeah, and he's the, the least stoned of everybody at this point. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Space Ghost blasts Zorak. Oh, the Space Ghost does that. Oh, he always does that. He always he always does, does that. Uh, Shake keeps interrupting the interview, shilling for Burger Trench. Meatwad explains to Moltar that he's composed out of the meat of unwanted pieces of burger. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Shake is still talking about his commercial and interrupting the interview. Maltar initiates hunger imagery to make the audience crave food. Space Ghost points out that the Aqua Teens were only supposed to run through occasionally, not take over the show. Space Ghost yells at Shake. Shake threatens to take away Space Ghost's boat. Space Ghost knocks over Shake, spilling chocolate goodness all <laughs> over the floor. Before blasting and killing Frylock. Oh no! Oh, uh, but then Moltar arrives with a mangled and dead meat water as a mask. Oh no. <laughs> While Shake is dying on the ground, he explains that classic rock will forever be changed. And in a live action sequence, a classic rock song about Burger Trench is being performed, which, based off a few similarities of style and singing, appears to be an alternate and somewhat distorted version of Led Zeppelin's Black Dog. At Space Ghost and Zorak's expense, the episode ends with Master Shake still on the floor asking God if he's in heaven or in television. So we should say that most of the characters that were in the Aqua Teen Hunger Force series did actually. Uh, reprise their roles on this episode. There are a few exceptions. So actually only one of the voice actors reprised their role from Aqua Teen Hunger Force on this episode. So in this episode, you had Dave Willis as both Master Shake and Meatwad. And he played Meatwad in the regular series, among many other characters. Uh, He played Meatwad. He played Carl, personal favorite of both of ours. Uh, He played the the Martian the alien Ignignat. Uh, he played Boxy Brown, one of Meatwad's invisible friends. Oh, Boxy Brown. Oh, Boxy Brown is great. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, that should do it. Okay, now, when I say cranky, you do whatever the people do when they're told to do that. Uh uh-uh, uh, I ain't hearing that. See, you asking and you telling. Because nobody tells Boxy Brown. Boxy, this is a big deal. I mean, I'm just asking a favor. Now, if you remember, I helped you move your grandma to the home. That was my day off. Well, that wasn't no grandma, boy. That was a grocery bag. But you just a bar. I just a what, bitch? Y- you're D- D- Duke of New York. You're A number one. You say it louder, boy. You're Duke of New York, A number one. <laughs> yeah. And playing for like in this episode is Matt Mylaro. And... He does some voices too, but he doesn't do Frylock. He does Ur, the uh, partner in crime of Ignignat, and he plays the cybernetic ghost of Christmas past from the oh, future. Cybernetic ghost of Christmas past from the future. You know what, Mike? You know what my favorite part in the Aqua Teen Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro M game for PS2 was? What was that? The cutaways during the game where before each level of 
cybernetic ghost of Christmas past from the future with the voiceover of Scott Van Pelt describing the level. Welcome to the glorious Jersey Pines Public Golf Course, home of the Zombie Ninja Pro-Am, where the streams run toxic with human waste. Don't come here on a hot day, right, Cyber Ghost? Say what? And it's a scorcher, 113 degrees. You really need to keep the ball out of the traps. Those are filled with Carl's enormous crabs. The trees will pose some real trouble, too, if they decide to migrate into the fairway. Every tree should be cut down. Trees do make oxygen, Cyber Ghost. I just defecated in that creek over there. Yes, I can see it from here. A metallic turd that floats upon a mighty sea driven by a wind from another universe. Yes, I can see it gleaming in the sunlight. And don't you forget it. I won't. You're jealous. I have not played that game in probably, I would guess, 12 or so years. I have it. I'm almost tempted to hook up my PS2 just to play it now. Just imagine, okay, the cybernetic ghost of Christmas past from the future and Scott Van Pelt in a video game. I can see it. I oh, can yeah. see it. Uh, considering Scott Van Pelt is an expert at golf since he worked at the Golf Channel. Right. So actually about this episode, we, we sort of said it was like a backdoor pilot It was and it wasn't. And what I mean by that is this episode was actually originally supposed to be done for the 1999 season of Space Ghost. So even though it aired in 2003, it was supposed to be for four years earlier. And obviously that's going to predate Aqua Teen Hunger Force by a year or two. Because we said it debuted, because we said it debuted in December of 2000. However, uh, it was rejected because it focused too much on the Aqua Teens. So, so obviously not enough on the guests, not enough on Space Ghost, too much on the Aqua Teens. So uh, the, the writers, uh, the aforementioned Matt Mylaro and Dave Willis decided to take Aqua Teen Hunger Force, modify them a little bit, and then turn them into their own series while the episode was rewritten and became Kentucky Nightmare. Uh, once Aqua Teen Hunger Force became popular, the writers decided to finish the Baffler Meal episode. The episode was played as part of the Adult Swim New Year's Eve marathon immediately after Meatwad was dropped in Times Square and the new year rang in on January 1st, 2003. That's great. Uh-huh. The crystal ball didn't drop in Times Square. It you was- had Meatwad. That <laughs> is, oh, that's perfect. Meatwad. I mean, that, 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 that really goes up there with like, the, the South Park New Year's countdowns, and of course the countdown that Conan O'Brien did for the Central Time Zone. That's great. Yes. And actually, if you want this episode, you, you can get it through HBO Max uh, because obviously they have all the, the Cartoon Network stuff on there. But also, if you have the Aqua Teen Hunger Force Volume 2 DVD box set, uh, it's an extra on that, uh, on the second disc. Oh. If I remember correctly, I've got the first seven seasons of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I believe the second season is like really loaded with a lot of bonus footage. So like if you remember, there was a uh, a spoof TV show that Meatwad was watching once, like Nursing Home Dracula or something like that. Oh, I remember that. Nursing oh, Home. Oh, yeah. They actually showed the actual footage that he was watching. They actually made like 30 seconds or a minute, and they actually put that as an extra in, I, I don't know if it was season two or season three, but most every one of the uh, the season series that uh, the, the Cartoon Network and Adult Swim put out for that show always had great bonuses. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, if you want to see that, uh, just find the season two series, which really I prefer the early Aqua Teen series. First season, second season are priceless to me. Then it got a little commercial and a little off the wall, and then they changed the names. And well, we, we know the rest Aqua Teen TV, TV show, show, or whatever it was called. Ye, not good, but also we should add since this was kind of sort of a pilot that the characters looked a little different than how they looked on Aqua Team. Oh, yeah. Oh, qu- quite a bit. 
First and foremost, Master Shake, he had no hands. No, no, no hands. Because if you watch Aqua Teen, he's got, he, he's got those gloves. Yeah, his hands are like, if he's, describe what I'm doing with my body right now. Yeah, so uh, his gloves, they essentially weren't like arms. They were sort of just attached to his body, to his cup. And I mean, he didn't have arms that he could extend out. No, it's just like gloves attached to the cup almost. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but also his eyes were much bigger and much boxier. And, and also, I think he looks a little shorter. But yeah, uh, he looks quite a bit different than he did on uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And also, hey, since we're talking about Burger Trench, he had a Burger Trench logo on his backside. Oh, I, I think that was the Adult Swim version of the Tramp Stamp. And instead of getting on your back a, a little fancy what have you, you had Master Shake with the Burger Trench logo. Frylock was vastly different. Now, Frylock on the show, as we know him, he doesn't have legs. He sort of hovers. Well, Frylock on the Baffler Meal episode, he had... Crinkle cut French fries for arms and legs. Ooh. He also didn't have that goatee, that very fierce looking goatee that he uh, wore on Aqua Teen. No. He was a generally happy person. He was Big ge- smile on his face. And, and also didn't have those sort of menacing eyes that you'd see on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. No. He's got more rounded eyes. He looks like a very happy character. Yeah. And you know what he looks like, Mike? What's that? Remember those McDonald's changeable Happy Meal toys that oh, looked no. like Transformers? He oh, looked no. like one of those. Oh, no. The changeables. McDonald's version of Transformers from back in the day. Oh, no. Do you remember the dinosaur McDonald's changeables? I, I remember some of them. There was like a Hot Cakes or something. Hot, hot Cakes. Cake, yeah. A hot yeah. Cakes dinosaur. Transformer oh changeable. But but you know what they didn't have, which they should have done? What? They should have had a mcdlt Oh, you damn right they should have had a mcdlt Yeah. And on one side is Aunt Viv and the other is Jason Alexander. So yeah, his legs and arms are crinkle-cut french fries. And he also has in his box, in his container... Uh, instead of the straight cut French fries like we know him having, he had crinkle cut French fries. Who doesn't like fr- crinkle cut French fries? Oh, crinkle cut French fries are great. I went to a uh, a lucha themed Mexican restaurant out in Santa Maria last week, and they had a big plate of crinkle cut French fries, and it was delicious. Oh, I've got crinkle cut French fries in the freezer, and oh, those are good. Mm. I'm trying not to get too hungry. It's late in the night. But also his voice. Frylock had a very gruff, low voice. Very powerful sounding. Frylock on this bathroom meal episode had an... an, an, This is a quote from uh, one of the fandom pages. A annoyingly high-pitched voice. So apparently his potato testicles had dropped at that point. Uh, and also, personality-wise, he was very whiny and childish. So th- this is not the man Frylock that we're used to. This is sort of the prepubescence Frylock, I guess. Having a high-pitched voice and being very whiny and childish. Yeah, so- something like that. And then we have Meatwad. And really, how can you change how a ball of meat looks? Well, first off, Meatwad, if you've never seen on Aqua Teen Hunger Force, has a very innocent uh, naivete about him. Very, I don't want to say childish, but uh, he acts as like he is a small child. And Meatwad in the Baffler Meal episode actually is very similar on the Baffler Meal episode, even though looking at him, he looks angrier. He's got a very stern look. And the thing is, Meatwad, unless you, like, took one of his toys or really irritated him, 
Meatwad was always happy-go-lucky on Aqua Team. Well, I know we didn't watch the episode. I'm sure that Greg and I did not do what we occasionally do, uh, looking at the episode and doing like a live commentary, because I don't know about Greg, but I don't want HBO on my butt. And also, we were unable to do the screen sharing on HBO Max with the Zoom app. Yeah, but but again, like I said, I've got the season two box set. I could have ripped it off the DVD and shared it, but maybe it's for the best. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes, even though it's not often, Space Ghost Coast to Coast does show up on Adult Swim. The place that I've seen it is on Friday nights. They like showing like all night marathons from like 11 till like five in the morning of single episodes. They've done it with, uh, that's where I saw uh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast a few months ago, and uh, they did it a lot back in like March and April. If you remember, they did like their March Madness where they, they wanted the fans to pick like the best series ever from Adult Swim. And I think uh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast was one of those that may have made like the Elite Eight or the Final Four. And I, th- I think that may have been like the consolation prize. Okay, we're going to show 12 episodes or, or, or 16 episodes of Space Ghost Coast to Coast on a Friday night. Oh, and by the way, one of the uh, 64 shows that was in that bracket, Greg? Yeah. Former installment, Xavier. Oh, Xavier Renegade Angel. Xavier Renegade Angel, yes. Oh. I don't think that got out of round one, sad oh. to say. Or if it did get out of round one, it didn't get out of round two. Oh. Yeah, well, can, well can, you, can you blame it? Well, at least Xavier got to give that great commencement address last year. Well, you know, Greg, that's a great consolation prize. Him giving the commencement speech to the class of 2020, the COVID class, or at least <laughs> the first of two. Yeah, maybe the first of three. Who knows? Gosh, let's hope not. Well, Greg, I think that's all we're going to say about this. The, yeah. the bathroom meal episode. Yeah. In 2003 on New Year's Day after Meatwad dropped the ball, it was a thing on TV. Yeah, it was. It was a great episode of a landmark series on Adult Swim. And again, it served as like a backdoor pilot for what I would say is probably their biggest show at the time. Aqua Teen Hunger Force is up there probably with uh, your Sea Lab 2021. And and I don't think Harvey Birdman premiered by this time. No. No. So, th- so that's coming up. But uh, it- it's really one of the really good series. Actually, both of these, two of the really great series in the infancy of Adult Swim, which is really landmark television. My oh, yeah. students like watching it all the time now. And uh, even though they get like none of the references and there's shows that were produced before they were born. Oh, and also we, we should make an acknowledgement before we go off the air. Yeah. Uh, we, we know that you didn't hear a certain voice uh, on this episode. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Chico for this episode or either of the other two episodes that we're doing this week. Unfortunately, something happened, not unlike what happened to me a couple of weeks ago when uh, I missed the Saved by the Bell, the college years episode and the college cheerleading championship episode. So Chico will be back next week. We apologize about that happening, but unfortunately life sort of happens. Hey, Greg. What? Speaking of that Saved by the Bell, the college years episode. Oh, yeah, that's coming up later this week. But before that, though, we have before two, that we have two things this week that fell on an anniversary for their 20th anniversary. So our next episode, we got another thing that's having its 20th anniversary. And it, too, started on September 9th of 2001. Yeah. I don't didn't know. say it ended on September 9th of 2001, but no. it started on September 9th of 2001. Yeah. And boy, I got... <coughs> <coughs> oh, no. <coughs> uh. You okay, Greg? Do you, do you need a, a Ricola? No, nah, I'm good. Do you need your dollar store uh, night cool or day cool or whatever you drink? No, nah, I'm all right. Okay. Just want to make sure that was quite a cough you had there. Yeah, quite a cough. Yeah. I don't want to have a million coughs, if you know what I mean. No, no, that, that wouldn't be good. 
That would be a major issue. A major uh-huh. issue. But you'll find out all about that in our next edition of It Was a Thing on TV. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you later on this week. Row! Oh, I'm dead. I guess that's the end of your but little... wait. Before I ascend into heaven free of all sin, I have a few other thoughts I'd like to share. Since I will no longer be working in television, which will sadden advertisers and prevent me from appearing with Guns N' Roses at Phillips First Union Center in January. Because I'll be dead. I think I said that earlier. So, to summarize, Classic rock will be forever changed! Oh no! And I'm making a movie with Axl Rose. It starts off in the desert. Quickly, to the houseboat! Where we are both hungry, and scorpions roam the earth. Everybody buckled in. To the club! Four dollars? For what? Hey, baby, say the way you play! What have I done to the future of classic rock? Hey, baby. God, are you there? Is this heaven? Or am I in television? <laughs>